A meeting called Jeff at Poker Logan Productions had the idea that we should do a, a, a comedy show in a drive-in movie theatre. And it was the first one in all of Canada. Sussex, New Brunswick on the map, ladies and gents. Yes, Sussex. Hats off to Sussex. We beat Winnipeg by a day, right? <laughs> It, it, and, and it became like a big thing across the country. Everyone was doing it in Montreal, Just for Last were doing it in Ottawa. Everyone was doing it, but Sussex was first. Now, I'd never been to a drive-in before, so it's my first time at a drive-in, and I'm on stage first at the drive-in. It's the first show of its kind, first one, it's my first one. So all I knew of drive-ins is what I've seen in North American movies. So it was a very glamorous concept to me. I'm like, all, I'm like Greece is one of my favourite films. So I thought, oh, if you go to the drive-in, you might get fondled by Danny Zuko. <laughs> Why I went, big fan, big fan. <laughs> so the reason it was a driving, of course, was it was two months of no performances, which is the longest I've gone in basically 20 years of not performing. And he came up with this concept, of course, so that everyone could be distanced, you couldn't leave your cars, um, and you could enjoy a show. So, of course, with the driving, as you know, you watch the movie and the, the, the sound is in your radio, in the car. I didn't know that part of it. So for a live comedy show, you, you have a little stage that no one can really see, but there's cameras around, and of course that's projected onto the screen. I didn't know about the FN radio thing, or that there wouldn't be a PA system. So I arrive there, first time at a drive-in, I get onto the little stage, there's cameras everywhere. I start, I start, I go, hello, Sussex. Oh, it's not on, it's not on, because I couldn't hear a PA system. <laughs> So I'm, I'm like, it's not on, it's not on, that's not working, guys, it's not, it's not working right. And I see a guy running from the projector booth at the back of the field. Because I can't see any people, all I can see is 300 cars, right? So there's five minutes of me going, it's not on, it's not on, it's not on. And he's running, and he gets to me and he goes, it is on. They're listening to you tap the mic, you're deafening them, banging the mic. They've just listened to you for five minutes saying it's not on, banging the mic. This is the worst start to a show ever. <laughs> I went, oh. So I, I, I composed myself. I told my first joke. Silence. <laughs> and I, I'm thinking this is gonna be a long fucking hour. <laughs> I'm looking at his cars. I'm not gonna know if they're laughing. I'm gonna have to talk for an hour. Oh my God. But then, through osmosis or New Brunswick resilience, I don't know what it was, we formulated a system whereby I would do the punchline and they would express their joy and laughter by honking their horns and flashing their lights. <laughs> it was amazing. It was a wonderful moment. Just... It was six or seven minutes in. I just thought I'm going to deliver this the best I can. And six or seven minutes in, we just formulated this system. And again, the next day, we, we spoke. The Winnipeg promoters phoned us to ask, how does it work? And we said, this is how it works. They honked their horns and flashed their lights, and it felt magical. And just to be back doing the job that I love, back being able to provide for my family. And again, I just basically pretended that the cars were people, right? <laughs> it was a bit like doing a gig in a Disney Cars movie. <laughs> right, you know, what's, what's the deal with the homemade wine? Honk, honk, flash, flash. Ooh, Lightning McQueen likes that one. <laughs> or Maida likes that one. Well, no, it was Sussex, it was all, all Maiders. <laughs> 300 Maiders. Looks like a fucking freedom convoy out there. about that one. Right? It popped in my head and I thought, don't say that, and then it came out. <laughs> <laughs> and, it was, and it was weird because it, for all of the faults, like I'm up there and I'm, I'm wearing a full suit and it's a, it's a beautiful summer's day. I am just dripping in sweat. There are hundreds of June bugs on my back, right? <laughs> I know I'm being bitten by mosquitoes constantly and, and I'm up there and I'm just doing it and the honks and the flashes and just the fact that after two months of, of, of lockdown we found this way to make this work and despite the June bugs and the mosquitoes and then of course you're competing with the sounds of Sussex. There's, there's generators going, there's four wheelers, there's the sounds of people fucking animals in the field next door. <laughs> So I know we're better than that, we're better than that. But I did do that joke in Sussex two weeks ago and they loved it. Um, but I got about 40 minutes in 
And I'm, we're getting into a rhythm, and despite all of these kind of distractions, it seems to be working well. And then suddenly they all just start honking and flashing really aggressively. Like, just, like not a punchline, just doing it. And I'm doing what I do, pacing up, and I'm like, what, 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 what's going on, what's going on? And I couldn't figure it out, and of course they couldn't tell me. And I, couldn't, and I looked down, I kid you not, there's a raccoon following me around the stage. <laughs> I know that watching me is a bit like watching Wimbledon tennis. You're like, Swilly, stand still. The raccoon was keeping up. It was magical and it felt special. And, and for the, in the next few weeks, people kept asking like, will you do a virtual show? And I was unsure about it. And, and I didn't know whether it would work. But then again, since then, I've actually now done about 70 of them, grown to love it. I don't know if you know how a virtual gig works, but essentially I have a little studio set up at home and the laptop's here, there's a camera there. There's a, I stand there with a mic and I have a little stage theater curtains behind me. And basically it's on, done by a, a Zoom or Teams or WebEx. And basically they're all muted. So the sound of laughter isn't kind of distracting or distorting, but they keep their cameras on so I can see them laughing. So for the last 25 months, I basically had to replace my love of the sound of laughter with a love of just a grid of just little boxes of people going. <laughs> <laughs> sitting in their offices or hot tubs. And, and it's a wonderful thing, <laughs> literally. You, 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 the shit that I've seen, honestly. <laughs> And it's amazing, I did one last week for RBC Manitoba. It was like nine in the morning, it's self-appreciation day. And it's become this, a, a thing now, it's no longer a compromise, it's a separate art form. And, and, and there's certain benefits to it. Like, sometimes you'll be doing it, and sometimes it'll be for like 100 people, it could be for 4,000. I did one for uh, the New Brunswick teachers and custodians. And hats off to Zoe Watson, it was an amazing idea. Uh, yes, give, give it up for the New Brunswick teachers, custodians, um, true heroes. Zoe Watts, an amazing woman, she, she realised that a lot of the custodians were going to be working in the schools the night of the show. So she put up all the big screens in the schools so while they were working they could watch the gig. Beautiful. Innovation. Beautiful. Um, but everyone would, would keep their cameras on. So in that case, there's like 4,000 people on it, which means that you can only fit like 20 or 30 people on a page. So if there's some miserable bastard not laughing, I would be standing here talking, but you, what they wouldn't see is my hand would go up and I'd move the non-laughing prick to another page. <laughs> and then scroll through and find someone that was losing their shit laughing, bring them forward. So 10 minutes in, I've curated my own audience. <laughs> I couldn't do that in a club, start moving people around. You're not laughing enough, you're going to the back. And uh, I, I went to it, but last June I was doing one for the, for the YPO, the Young Presidents Organization. It's a global organization, but it's, uh, it was for the North American contingent. So it was CEOs and presidents from across Canada and America. Almost every state and province represented. It's about 60 of them, and it's a Saturday night, it's about 8 p.m., and I'm about halfway through. It's going quite well. There's lots of. <laughs> and I think we're on board here. And then suddenly I'm like on a setup, like on a setup to a joke. I'm not saying anything, like now where you're looking at me going, get to the fucking point, mate. Like the, <laughs> the setup point, the setup. Blank faces. And I just paused or I said because or something. And they all in unison just burst into hysterics. And I'm like, what is going on? I was so enthroned by it, I, 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 I stopped talking. I mean, oh, oh, what's, what's, and they laughed even more. I'm like, this is weird. And I'm like, what's going on? Like, they can't have all received the same text at the same time because they wouldn't have all been able to read it. No one's walked in the room because they're in every different province and state. And I'm, and I'm looking down, like, what's happened? What's happened down here? I'm completely thrown by it. And they're just laughing more and more and more. And then I hear a sound behind me. I turn around. My seven-year-old son, River, is standing there naked, waving his willy at them. <laughs> I've been doing this job, not once have I thought, I do hope a seven-year-old doesn't show up and steal the show by waving his willy at the audience. <laughs> but I'll be honest, you know what really upset me? What really upset me most was the fact that I've actually never seen an audience laugh harder. <laughs> I think when I'm eventually allowed back on the road, I'll bring River with me at any time. Oh my God, there's a beautiful baby there. Hi. Hi, everyone say hi to the baby. Hold, do you mind holding on? What's your baby's name? Oh my God, sorry, sorry to interrupt. What's your baby's name? Beg a band? Claire. Claire, hi Claire. This is Claire's first comedy show, I'm assuming. 
I do hope Claire's first word is not the F word now after tonight. I'm, I'm going to clean up the rest of the show. Thank you so much for bringing Claire to. This is amazing. She's going to, she's going to like learn things. Thank you. Oh my God! Congratulations. How, how many weeks old is Claire? Four months old. Oh my God! Give it up for Claire. Her first comedy show. How well is she behaving? Amazing. Beautiful. And where was I? Yes. So there was me thinking, well, if eventually, if things go back to normal, I'll take River on the road with me. Anytime a gig goes bad, I'll just be like, oi, River, come on out. And he can go, fucking you, fucking we, fucking. I mean, he, he wouldn't be saying fucking, obviously, obviously. <laughs> we, we raised him proper. <laughs> He'd probably be saying, uh, how many Paw Patrol toys am I getting for this again, Dad? <laughs> Chase is on the case, son. Get your dick out. Come on. <laughs> and I th 